On Wednesday, I go to school again. At the beginning of the lesson, one student says, I started to read more. I feel that it is good for me. I can see how my grammar is better, but I have a problem. When I read, I look up a new word in a dictionary. Then I continue reading. Sometimes when I see the same word again only ten minutes later, I don't remember the word and I have to look it up again. Can you help me to remember the words better? Our teacher says that it is an interesting question and she gives this explanation. It is absolutely normal that you don't remember the new word immediately. Usually, you will have to look up the word five times before you remember it. There will be also words that you will have to look up 10 or 15 times. These words are usually verbs. When we learn a new word, the word goes through phases. Only when you achieve the last phase, you remember the word very well. There are five of these phases. Let's have a look at them. The first phase is the moment when you see the word for the first time and you don't know the word. You look it up in the dictionary. The second phase is the moment when you see the word that you have already looked up in the dictionary or heard or saw it in the past. You know that you saw this word before, but you still don't remember its meaning. You look up the word again. The third phase is the moment when you see the word again and you feel what it could mean but you are not sure. For example, you know that the word is some kind of object or some animal or a verb. The fourth phase is the moment when you already know what the word means when you see it, but you are not able to recall the word when you want to say it. When this phase happens, the word is in your passive vocabulary. The fifth phase is the moment when you are able to use the word when you speak. Now you can see there are five phases all together. Do you understand now why it is not possible to remember a new word when you see it for the first time? You would have to jump across all the phases with the first encounter with the word. You have to see or hear every word several times and let it go through all the phases until you get to phase number five. You can be happy not only when you learn a new word perfectly, but also when you get from one phase to the other. When it happens, you are closer to the final goal and it is to use the word without problems in everyday communication. All of this is interesting to me. I didn't know about these phases, but it is all logical. It also happened to me that I looked up a new word in the dictionary, but two minutes later I didn't know what the word was and I had to look it up again. I felt stupid that I didn't remember the word. Now, I know that it is absolutely okay not to remember the word forever when I see it for the first time. I need several encounters with the word before I can use the word well. After school, I go to my football training. Our coach tells us that there will be a match on Saturday. The school team will play against another school team from Cambridge. Our coach tells me to come and play for the school team. I am very happy and I am looking forward to the Saturday match. The next day, I go to school again. One of the students has an important question. He wants to know how to improve his listening skills. He wants to know what the best approach is. Our teacher says, thank you for your question. Good listening skills are very important for communication. If you don't understand what people are saying, it will be difficult for you to speak with them. There are a lot of materials on the internet for students of English. Some students can have a problem with finding the right listening materials for them. Let's have a look at what you should listen to. There are two types of materials which you can listen to. You can listen to some audio or you can watch a film. These are quite different materials and different rules apply to them. When you listen to some audio, you should know 95% of the words or more. If the audio has a lot of new words, read the text first if possible and make sure you know all the words. When you practice listening, you practice getting information from a spoken language. You don't try to learn new words. 
Of course, sometimes you can learn new words, but it is not the main goal. When you listen, concentrate on getting information from spoken English. It is important to use materials at your level of English. For example, you can use books in simplified English which contain an audio recording. I really recommend these books to you. They are fantastic because you can choose a book at your level of English. When you have such a book, read the book first and then listen to the recording at home or when you travel. You can read two great books at www. RobinsonCrusoeAinLevels.com or www.TheLittleEPRInKindLevels.com. You can also visit www.NewsInLevels.com if you like listening to the news. All these materials are in three levels of English. The second type of materials for listening practice are films and videos on www.YouTube.com. These are also great. You can start using them when you know 2,000 words in English or more. This is what you should do with a film. Watch it for the first time with subtitles so that you know what the film is about. Then watch the film without subtitles. If you like the film very much, you can watch it more than once. When you watch one film many times with every view, you will understand more. It is also good to watch videos on the internet about interesting subjects. For example, if you like nature, you can watch documentaries about nature. You can also watch reality shows. Reality shows are much easier to understand than films or documentaries because the structure of the show is usually the same. It is necessary to have at least 30 minutes a day of listening. The more you listen, the faster you will understand more words. When listening, you should always look at what you already understand, even if it is just 10% at the beginning. It is very easy to demotivate yourself by realizing all of the parts that you don't understand yet. Look at what you already know. Be happy for every new sentence you have understood. Listening is the easiest way to learn. You don't have to do anything. You just listen. Did this information help you? Yes, says the student. Thank you. The listening topic is very interesting for me. Now I know what to do to improve my listening. On Friday, we have an interesting conversation in our class. Our teacher has a question for us. She asks, What was your first reason to learn English? Do you remember the moment when you started to learn English? When did you start to be really interested in the language? I say that I remember the moment when I started to be interested in English. My teacher says, can you tell us what happened? I say yes. First, I have to say that English wasn't always my favorite subject. I started to learn English at high school. At the beginning, it was very difficult for me. I didn't understand the structure of the language. It was illogical to me. I tried to remember words. I tried to learn grammar, but it was very hard. When I finished high school, I was still only a beginner. I couldn't speak English, and I believed that I would never learn this language properly. I simply believed that English wasn't for me. Then something happened. I always liked music, and when I was 20, I started to listen to the Beatles. I wanted to understand what they were singing, so I started to translate their songs. Slowly, I understood more and more. Then I met two ladies from England on a train. We had a simple conversation, but it helped me very much. I started to believe that I could learn English. From that moment on, I was working on my English almost every day, and I was getting better and better. Then I decided to go to England and improve English here. My teacher thanks me for sharing my story. She also tells me, here is something very interesting about your story. You are still you. The first, you didn't have motivation to learn English. The second, you had a motivation. 
You wanted to understand songs. You can see that motivation is very important. When you have it, you can succeed. When you don't have it, it is very hard to be successful. Then our teacher asks everybody in the class about their motivation to learn English. The stories are very interesting. One girl's motivation is to be able to read historical books in original English. One student wants to be a professional tennis coach in England. He wants to speak perfect English before he starts his career as a coach. One woman wants to work for a big international company, and she needs English for her job. I can see that everybody has some kind of motivation to use English in real life or to get information from books. At the end of the lesson, our teacher asks us if we like English. I say I didn't like English at my high school, but now I like it a lot. I can see how useful it is to know this language. Our teacher says this is another important factor when you learn a new language. It is good when you like something which is connected to English. It can be people, music, culture, or history. If you like English, it is easier for you to learn it. If you want to be able to communicate in English, it is good to know three thousand words or more. If you don't like English, it is more difficult to find time to practice enough to get to the level of three thousand words. I can agree with my teacher. Now I like not only the Beatles but also my teacher and my boss, who is also English. I also like English humor. Now it is much easier for me to find time to practice English every day. On Saturday, I go to play football for my school team. We have some very good players on our team, and we win three to two. We are all very happy. We go to the pub after the match, and we celebrate our victory. During the next lesson, one of the students asks our teacher this question: "You told us that it is good to know three thousand words." Where can I find these three thousand words that are the most important for me to learn? My teacher replies, "You can Google a list of the three thousand most frequent words in English, but such a list will not help you much. When you start to learn words from this list, you will learn words outside the context. You will learn the words that are not connected with any story." You will not learn what other words are connected with these words and sentences. You will learn them in your short-term memory. This system works only for some words. These are basic words which describe things and people around us. For example, mother, father, apple, blue, orange, dog, cat, book, car, house, city, boy, girl. Water, cinema, or paper. These are words which represent something that you can imagine easily. For example, when you learn the word dog, you know immediately what it is. You have a clear idea in your head what the word means. Yet, when you want to learn words such as appreciate or suppose, this system doesn't work well. This is a problem many students experience. They start their studying by using lists of words. It works at the beginning, and they believe that they can learn English this way. They don't know that when they achieve the level of one thousand words, they have to start using a different system. If you want to learn words from a higher level, you have to learn them from whole sentences. If you understand the meaning of a word in the context of a sentence, you will learn the word much better. You can learn words from lists, but there is usually a limit where you can go with this way of learning, and it is one thousand words. Also, way of learning is very slow. There are much better ways which we have already spoken about, such as reading. For beginners, the best book to read is Robinson Crusoe in Simple English. You can find this book at www. RobinsonCrusoeIinLevels.com. It is the best book I know of for learning new words for beginners. There is also one interesting rule that applies here. 
Every word that is important for you will come back to your life again and again until you learn the word. This is very similar to the way we learn your own language. When we are children, we don't study from lists of words. We just use the language and important words keep coming into our lives again and again until one day we know what the words mean. We keep learning new words this way all our lives. For example, the verb Google is a new word in many languages. We learned this word by using the language. We didn't learn this word from any list of words. When you heard the word Google for the first time, you probably didn't know what the word meant. Then you heard it again and again as the word was important for you, and after some time you understood the word. You can forget about lists of words. Learn new words by reading stories and other interesting texts. When you use English a lot every day, you will learn new words more effectively than from lists of words. Does it make sense? Yes, says the student. Thank you. After school, I go to my work. I already understand how to do my work very well. Things start to be automatic. I am happy that I understand my customers. It is not very difficult because the conversations are usually very similar. Our customers want some coffee or sandwiches, so the words are usually the same or very similar. My confidence goes higher, and sometimes I start to have longer conversations with our customers. Everything is good, but then something happens. It is a little bit shocking for me. On Tuesday, when I am at my work, something interesting happens. Two customers come to our cafe. They are a husband and a wife. The man starts to speak to me. I know that he speaks English, but I don't understand him. I don't understand what he wants. I think that he wants something we don't have, so I call my boss. She speaks with the man, and she sells him two coffees and two of our regular sandwiches. I am surprised. When they leave, I go to my boss and I tell her that I am sorry I didn't understand the man. She says that it is okay. She says that this can happen when people speak with an accent that is new to us. She tells me that the pair was from Scotland. The next day, I go to school and I tell the story to my teacher. I tell her that I felt really stupid that I didn't understand our customer. I wasn't sure if my English was good enough for my job. I started to doubt myself. My boss was okay with it, but I still needed some help from my teacher. I wanted to know what I could do in these situations. My teacher says I understand. You are used to English that people speak in London, but you aren't used to the Scottish accent. Your ears aren't used to listening to the Scottish accent. All you have to do is to listen more to Scottish English. You need to train your ears to this accent as well. What happened to you can happen to everybody. When you already speak English at some level, and you go to a country where people speak with a different accent, you shouldn't be surprised if you don't understand. It is okay, and it usually takes two weeks to get used to this new accent. You shouldn't think that there is something wrong with you when you don't understand a new accent. With practice, you can train your ears to any accent. Then I ask, so what can I do to understand the Scottish accent? I don't live in Scotland. Our teacher says you can watch films with Scottish English, or you can watch situation comedies from Scotland, and soon you can understand. I tell her, thank you. After school, I go to my work again. At about four o'clock, two interesting customers come to our cafe. This time, they are not from Scotland. They are foreigners. They want to buy some coffee. They are two ladies, and it is clear that their English is very basic. My boss is serving them. When she hears that they don't speak English very well, she does something very interesting. She changes her English. She uses very simple sentences with only three or four words. 
I can see that the ladies understand her. They buy two coffees, two sandwiches, and two cakes. They're happy, and my boss is happy too. When the ladies leave, I tell my boss that it was very nice how she changed her English so that the two ladies would understand her. My boss says that sometimes she has to speak in a very simple English. It doesn't matter if the customers speak English well or not. They are customers, and we have to do everything possible to make them feel comfortable. If they see that they can speak English here, they can come to our cafe every day. I think that our boss is a good businesswoman. She does everything possible to make our customers happy. It is true that we have a lot of customers. Our cafe is busy every day. The next day at school, I tell my teacher about my experience with my boss and the two ladies who didn't speak English very well. Our teacher says, "Great, your boss must be a very clever young lady. It is true that you can communicate with everybody. Even people who speak English very well can have a conversation with those who are just at the beginning of their journey." Today we will speak about different levels of English and what you should be able to do at these levels. Let's start with the lowest level of 1,000 words. At this level, students can speak about some basic things from everyday life. The speaking is very limited, but it is already possible to communicate slowly for a short time with people who want to speak with you. Your sentences are short. They have usually four words. If the others also speak in short sentences, you can have a basic conversation. When students move to a higher level, which is two thousand words, the conversations are easier and the sentences are longer. This is the level most of you in this class are at right now. You should be able to speak about many things from your life. You can speak about your family, hobbies, job, and traveling. Sometimes you may have a problem when you want to go into a deeper conversation on certain topics. However, this level is usually sufficient enough for everyday use of English. If you want to be able to have a deeper conversation on many topics, it is good to know three thousand words. Your goal as a student of English who wants to be able to speak English well. Should be to learn three thousand words. Of course, you can learn more than three thousand words. The more words you know, the easier it will be for you to communicate in English. But three thousand words is the level that is usually enough for communicating in English about almost everything. I think that the two ladies at your cafe knew about one thousand words. Your boss went to their level. And she had a basic conversation with them. After my school, I go to my work. The two ladies come to our cafe again. They also bring two of their friends. It is my turn to serve them. I speak to them in simple, short sentences. They understand me. This is great. They tell me that they are tourists from Japan. They tell me that they like our cafe because people understand them here. On Thursday, I go to school again. One student has a very interesting question. She says, "I am very shy when I have to speak English. Can you help me to overcome my shyness?" Our teacher says, "It is true that when we use foreign languages, it is natural that we feel uncertain or shy. We are doing something that we are not perfect at. The possibility of making a mistake is great." I was also very shy when I learnt foreign languages. I remember well how I was afraid to make a mistake. When I did make a mistake, I felt stupid and sometimes I blushed. Now it is different. I use languages for communication. I care only about communication. You know that I am learning Spanish these days. Embarrassing situations can happen, but they can't stop me from using Spanish. It is true that sometimes I still feel shy when I have to speak Spanish. I also sometimes blush, but I don't care much about it. It is a natural human feeling, and it never lasts forever. 
I continue using Spanish because I know that only by using it I can improve. I also try to see things as they are. I am a student and I am on the way to good Spanish. It is not possible to skip several levels in one day. The beginner can't become a perfect speaker in one hour. I also see what I mean to people around me. When I already speak some Spanish, I have a value to people who speak Spanish. You should see the same. When you already speak some English, you can have a conversation with other people in English. That's great. Look at what you already know. You know 2,000 words. You have already gone from zero to 2,000 words. Appreciate it. Some students have a feeling that to know English means to be able to speak like a native speaker, to have perfect pronunciation, perfect grammar, and just speak perfectly without any mistakes. They think that if they're not doing that, then they don't know English. They're embarrassed because they're not perfect. These students are very hard on themselves. It is not necessary. All of you are great because you already speak some English. Continue working on your English and your shyness can gradually go away. I like what our teacher tells us. I am also sometimes shy. I know that I should practice speaking a lot, but in some situations, I don't want to look stupid and I don't speak as much as I should. I decide to be a bit more brave in these situations and use them to practice more. Then one student says, sometimes I want to say something, but I don't know the word which I want to say. Then I stop and I don't know what to do. In these situations, I feel very stupid. Then the next time when I can speak English, I don't want to speak because I don't want to be in this stupid situation again. Can you help me with this? Our teacher says, when you start to speak English, you have to prepare for one thing. There will be moments when you don't know a word which you want to say. In such a situation, you will need to learn how to describe the word. This ability is very important when learning a new language. Since you are not a native English speaker, you will probably never know the same amount of words as you know in your native language. I can tell you that you can describe almost every word. You only need to train this skill. You will have to train how to express ideas within the vocabulary you have. For example, you don't know how to say the word key. You can describe it as a small thing for opening a door. You also describe words in your native language without realizing it. If you don't know the word for something, you just describe it to the other person so that they understand what it is. You can do the same thing in English, but you need to train this ability. Thinking aloud is a very good technique to use when you want to be able to describe well. Use thinking aloud every day and your ability to describe things will improve.